David. <laughs> this is a story of a man with a very strange <laughs> fate. Hey, look. It's like I've grown wings. <laughs>
I didn't see you again this time either. Little Peggy. My name is David Young, former knock with the Boston PD, and now a detective who searches the past. My likes include 100% de agave tequila, my dislikes are mainly drugs and chewing gum. Two years ago, someone killed my wife. Since then, I've been using every second of my life to solve a case. Using a certain, very special power. My head is full of memories of my wife and the bullet that robs me of them. What happened in this place on that day? Little Peggy. <sighs> Everyone has their own place to work. A small desk in an office, a molten hot factory, a quiet library, the register in a supermarket, or in the middle of an intersection, in bed, on a golf course, a kitchen. For some, it's the whole town. From the day she died, this has been my place to work. It's been broken since that day. Little Peggy. A gift is an expression of emotion. The person who sends it wants the feelings to be understood. Sometimes, however, those feelings remain in a slightly different form. I call these forgotten treasures mementos.
No results this time either. This case is in the clear. I need to clear this case first. I can sleep after that. Did you hear about David's wife? Man, they were just married, too. I heard it was revenge for one of his investigations. Sure sounds like the way they operate. Sending a deadly message. There's only one thing I need after work. Tequila. Straight up. Nothing mixed in. <sighs> the perfect stimulation for my lead-filled brain. You always look so happy drinking that. I wish I could have a drink too. Does it really taste that good? Maybe I'll just try a little. I have no memories of that day. When I came to, I was already lying in the ICU. The only thing I do remember are the words that little Peggy whispered as she died. Look for D. Who is D? Those words keep spinning in my head. At the time, with no compelling evidence, the case hit a dead end. I quit the BPD. However, under the right circumstances, I now have the capability to solve even a dead end case. I'll do everything in my power to find this. I swear I will. And when I do... Oh, Peggy. Amanda?
Your common sense may not be the world's common sense. Values are never the same. You don't have to believe in Sanda, but you really should believe in God. A Nobel Prize for the first man who put cheese in a hamburger. Hey, Amanda. Do you want to watch too? We're just at the best bit. Little... Sebastian the Sleuth, a cat, who's also a detective. Huh. Just reruns.
I was lucky to survive. Ironically, though, I've got a best piece of evidence still lodged in my head. <laughs> When a desire goes unfulfilled, it only increases in power. Stagnating like a blocked pond, those are the mementos I seek. Those are the kind of memories that will invite me back into the past. What am I doing? Escape now. <gasps> this is Amanda. She just suddenly started living here one day. She sometimes goes out and gets food for us. And that's something of a lifeline for me, as I don't really go outside. Just who she is, though, well, my memory holds no answers. <sighs> Yo, David, everything ship shake? As you can see, Teddy. Someone definitely got the jump on you. <laughs> Forrest Kaysen, a detective with the Boston Police Department, and my former partner. He still helps me out nowadays in my search for D. He's both a client and a source of information. He gets whatever I need. Uh. <clears throat> Women. 
are always trouble. Doesn't matter how old they get, trouble. I'm fighting with Diana again? <sighs> like you wouldn't believe. Women, men don't stand a chance. Uh, don't come and see me. Actually means get right over here. But then leave me alone just means, well, leave me alone. How am I meant to make sense of that? Tell me, David, please. Never show weakness, no matter who you're fighting. Oh, give me a break. We're not talking about some investigation here. Uh, I was a fool to ask you. Man, Diana is so stupid. Once feared as the mighty grizzly, detective among detectives. Now he's more like a big teddy bear. What's the point of the place? Teddy, what's this? So, tell me, David, have you heard the news about that airplane accident, huh? Access Gate Airways Flight 117, struck by unexplained lightning. No one's talking about anything else right now. We might be looking at the real deal. I've got the good stuff for you this time. Passenger simply vanishing from an aircraft mid-flight. Does that sound possible to you? Antonio Zapatero, otherwise known as Rabbit. He's a courier who only carries real blood. This one promised to provide evidence after being brought to Boston. Evidence that may well have led to the ID of the source of real blood. But then the lightning struck, and in the confusion, he vanished. He escaped somehow? No. When I say vanished, that's pretty much what I mean. Like something out of a magic act. So, clue me in. What makes this one the real deal? The name of the boss he was going to give up? apparently starts with the letter D. This courier might have had evidence revealing the identity of D. So, interested yet? Let me ask you again. A passenger simply vanishing from an aircraft mid-flight. Does that sound possible to you? Almost anything is possible. That's why he brought this to me in the first place, isn't it? Glad we're on the same page. The courier had the evidence with him. I tell you, there's gotta be a third party involved somewhere. From the evidence I was able to bring, this particular item is the most interesting. The owner of that badge was involved in this incident. Well? No doubt about it. This is a memento. Great. 
It's yours then. Let's hope it's the last one you'll ever need.
Nothing sticks out to me. Okay. So why this courier turn witness anyway? I don't know the details, but apparently he's in fear for his life. He turned himself into the DEA. And they trust him? Uh, I don't know about that either. But this is information about the mastermind behind real blood. I mean, they're probably saying, can't hurt to hear him out. I feel exactly the same way. What's the bio on the courier? Antonio Zapatero, 28. Quick to go underground, but then quickly pops up again somewhere else. That's why they call him the Courier Rabbit. <laughs> why Rabbit? He's also a womanizer. So... You know how rabbits are. Strong libidos. I bet the ladies call him Bunny in bed. <laughs> Why is this courier running his mouth about providing evidence then? Standing out like that, he'll get penalized and sit out a match. It's like he's begging the bad guys to come silence him. It's a real blood case after all. I mean, a regular courier wouldn't talk, even if it meant death. If I had to choose between jail and hell, oh man, I'd still choose lockup. Uh, there's something behind all this. So it's all a big conspiracy? Don't ask me. There are people who have conspiracy theories about your case, though. You lost your beloved wife, and I lost the best partner a cop could ever ask for. <sighs> yeah, the more you think about the questions, the more distant the answers become. Hmm. Humans may not have the ability to understand the complete truth. So how are the BPD tied up in this? The BPD has the special drugs unit, after all. The team you once belonged to. Once? We have a long history of handling real blood. Our past knowledge can come in handy for cases like this one. Any progress with the case since I left? Uh, we're still hard at work on it. We're not getting any results. This drug is king across New England now. Mm. Yeah, it's been under analysis for years, but MIT still doesn't know how to make it. Seriously, the world's going to hell. Do you think the past can be changed? David, you can't change the past. You just have to accept the past. I know, but... If I could just meet with little Peggy one last time, I'll change the past. You'll see. What's up, David? Feeling hungry? Okay, good. Let's eat then. I know you too well. You probably have only been drinking alcohol. <laughs> Your badge says detective for a reason, Teddy. <laughs> Go get Amanda. The more the merrier at the dinner table. Tell me, Teddy. What's up with you and Diana? Mm, nothing much. It's just how we roll. 
New York versus Boston again? That's the root of it. But both of you are originally from New York. I thought you'd be double teaming me. I've been living in Boston for 30 years, man. I'm a Bostonian now, body and soul. Diana doesn't see it that way? Nah, she still got her head stuck right up in New York. So what was it this time? Baseball? Basketball? Not football. Mm, nope. Something bigger. But what's bigger than sports rivalry? Oh, um, this one's bigger. Much bigger. It's all about clam chowder. Clam chowder. Yeah, clam chowder. No matter how you slice it, Boston has the best clam chowder in the world. You're with me on this, right? Right? Huh? Oh, but Diana just can't see it. I have no basis for comparison. What? I've never eaten clam chowder anywhere but Boston. So it's the best in the world by default. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, come on, David. Hmm. Sorry. Uh. I can't help you out. I can't say anything absolute that isn't based on personal experience. I need you on this. All I needed you to say was damn straight. Uh. Teddy. Thanks for all the help. Ha, huh, no problem, David. We're partners. You may have quit the force, but that fact won't change. Hell, if you trace it all the way back, if I hadn't asked you to join up in the first place... Teddy! No, no, no. Don't give me that look, Amanda. I'm just trying to give him a reason to live.
Little Peggy, time has been frozen for me since that day. <laughs> Will I see you this time? <laughs> David. <laughs> this is a story of a man with a very strange <laughs> fate. Hey, look. It's like I've grown wings. The lavatory, on an airplane, another successful dive. Touching memories called mementos, allows me to dive into the past. The day little Peggy was killed, I survived. Miraculously, somehow, I survived. In exchange for losing my memory, I gained this power. That has to be a sign of something. The past will surely tell me the truth. <gasps> Look for the... I can't get a voice out of my head. Who killed her? Just who is D? The only way to silence that voice is to change my fate. Mind? Witness? Or maybe? from an airplane during a flight? That's impossible. 
There's got to be something I'm missing. Oh. Oh. Are you okay? <laughs> David. Little Peggy? Sir, are you okay? You look like you've just seen a ghost. My apologies, Olivia. You just look so much like an old girlfriend of mine. What's that supposed to mean? Just for a second, I actually thought little Peggy had come back to life. I have to get back to work. Sure. No problem, Olivia. Just one thing, sir. Thoroughly aware that we carry a passenger list aboard. Huh. Memorized it, have you? We don't take kindly to stowaways, if that's what you are. A stowaway, am I? Well, Miss Olivia Jones. Maybe you're on to me. Courier is gonna vanish, is he? No matter what trick he uses, I'll get to the bottom of this. Sir, may I help you? Sir... You mentioned a passenger list? Oh, I'm sure it's just my mistake. You really do have it memorized? I thought I did, but I'm still new at this job. It's probably just my mistake. I'm sorry I said anything. You called me a stowaway, didn't you? My apologies for that, sir. What did you mean? Nothing really. No deep meaning. Nothing at all? I must apologize if I have upset you. I didn't mean to. I'm truly very sorry. Is it true that there's a United States Marshal aboard this flight? Why would you ask such a thing? I heard some of the other crew talking. <laughs> Let's hope she buys that. I have no idea. No idea at all? Isn't the passenger list burned into your memory? Even if I did know, I couldn't tell you. Why would you care to know, may I ask? Oh, just a passing interest. Hmm. This emergency door is sealed up tight. Just where does the courier plan on making his escape from?
You're a United States Marshal. You're transporting a key witness, but reading a completely different file. Does that just mean you're passionate about your job? Or is there something else going on here? You, what are you doing here? Derek Buchanan, United States Marshal. The owner of the memento I used to get here, along with a name that starts with D. Two signs I can't ignore. I said I'd kill you if I saw you again, didn't I, boy? It seems we've already met somewhere. Was I offside? Quit your jabbering. Why do you keep sticking your nose into this case? I've got a question for you, too. Why do you only investigate cases related to real blood? Antonio Rabbit Zapatero, a dealer of the drug called Real Blood. Apparently, he also has evidence that could lead to the identity of D. If that's true, it makes him the most important person on this flight. You really have a death wish, don't you? Yet you might be the one who dies. How dare you? You should get out as quickly as you can. I'll keep the fountain pen. To remember you by. These look like souvenirs from the trip. God damn it! My turn, asshole! God damn it! But of course, I, I, yes. Again, I... I know no, I heard... No, I... I hmm... Snow on the front, cherry blossoms on the back. They change them according to the season? It isn't totally atrocious, but hardly avant-garde now, is it? I'd expect no less flying coach, of course. Would it have killed them to use a little real stitching? Honestly! And who might you... I don't ask for opinions from the uninspired. Suki, baby, what do you think? Dress all the seats white, then crown them with a single pink stag beetle? Oh, yes! Or maybe change all these to black lights, but not too dramatic. Just lay Does straight. your mannequin ever reply? She's not a mannequin. She's my partner. She is? 
Yes, she is. I'm Duncan, and this is Suki. We're top fashion designers, the both of us. <sighs> <sighs> Mm. Duncan. So this guy's also a D. Some people just don't get it, no matter how many times you tell them. My bad, I'm sure. Can I ask you something? I don't need your opinion. After all, I have Suki. The sunglasses in particular are strikingly progressive, don't you think? This is avant-garde! The epitome of my next theme. <clears throat> the cart that was blocking the aisle has been moved. Now I can expand my search area a little wider. Hmm? 4,539? 4,540? There's something fishy going on here. Is there a problem? The west side window. The sun's setting there, so that's the west. The west side window, the angle of the setting sun, that is the left side in regard to our direction of travel. That window right there. That window made a noise, didn't it? You heard it, right? I have to inform Dr. Johnson. Going to Washington, D.C. by plane. Nonsense. Absolute nonsense. She has her name written on everything she owns. She's a D2? This is so bad. This plane is going down. It's okay. There's no problem. Oh, shut your mouth. There were lightning strikes on the flight over. There's most definitely a problem. The window will keep on creaking. Suddenly, it will break. We'll turn like crazy. Lightning will hit us again. A direct hit. Lightning? <sighs> yes. Lightning. It'll blow an engine up this time, that's for sure. And what happens then, Mr. No Problem? This plane won't be flying anymore. You agree with me now, right? This plane is going down! No. This plane didn't crash. What? Didn't crash? Didn't? How the fuck would you know that? Who the hell do you think Is there a problem, oh, madam? This this dumb shit here is fucking with me. I told him the noise the window was making is bad news. I told him. Well, madam, I'm sure you did. <laughs> Very well. I just... Uh, Please allow me to handle this. unbelievable. I never well, well. So mad Let me life. see now. Mr. Young, wasn't it? How I have to admit, I didn't expect to ever see you again. I can't imagine why. It's outrageous. It's, it's unbelievable. I will not do it. I will not just... <sighs> this flight attendant seems to know me. I have no idea when I met him, however. For me, our first meeting is a past that hasn't happened yet. <sighs> on an airplane in the air. You are quite the stubborn mule. The type who won't stay dead, even if he gets killed, maybe. Oh, I wonder. <laughs> if you're going to cause trouble, I may have to eject you from the game. Trouble? Me? Your watch was about to fall off. It looks expensive. So I didn't think you'd want to lose it. I'm just a polite, helpful passenger. Look, ref, if you're gonna bench anyone, bench her. And I heard it. And if you don't listen to me, I don't know what I'll do. Just listen. 
Now I've got three people with names that start with D. Deborah Anderson, Duncan, and Derek Buchanan. To be honest, I still don't know if any one of them is who I'm after. But there's a bag load of room for suspicion. Isn't that right, little Peggy? More of this. You've Every heard it before, you know. Undergoes just... more than 100 rigorous checks before. What? The... Are you saying these window noises are all in my head? Are you dumb buck? I thought you were a nice gentleman. Madam, you think I I'm just some complainer, some the... lawsuit seeker? Do you? This is completely unacceptable. Completely unacceptable. Show me your name tag. Show it to me! Employee number D-3582. I've burnt it into my forebrain. Once I'm home, yes, I am going to sue you. I have never been so mad in my life. <laughs> but I... I'm just practicing what I preach. As you I wish, madam. That. However, perhaps if we change your any way frail, I can talk to your manager? I'm sure the sound I've of windows would not annoy you in, say, and every... business class. Hmm? The seats I've... are very fluffy, too. Business? That's a class? It is, madam. I could show you to your seat. One where I can't hear the windows. No creaking. nasty window noises in business. <laughs> well, I. If you'll just allow me to explain the procedure for your upgrade. I suppose that could be okay. <laughs> In the instant I saw that big man, the scar on my forehead started to throb. It's never happened before. What's going on here? The Metro M. That's the subway in DC. The Boston MBTA uses a T symbol, so this ticket was used in DC. Cherry blossoms. A seasonal theme, I'm guessing?
There's nothing here. Snow and cherry blossoms. A seasonal theme, I'm guessing? Nothing looks out of place. What are you doing here? <laughs> This big fella. I've met him before somewhere, but I can't remember where. My scar is desperately trying to tell me that he knows something.
Link! Antonio Zapatero! Uh, there's no way to stare in truth or dare! If you wanna know about me... Go on a fucking investigation! Hand over your evidence! Whatever it is! I need it! Are you serious? <laughs> you so silly! Then I'll just have to take it... by force! Hot beverage? If you really do know... who D is, I'll... What? If I really know? You what? Young a ling a ding dong. Oh my goddess, Suki! You'll get over it. Yeah, things just got serious. All right, Zapatero. I'm knocking this one out of the park. Get the picture! <laughs> this is how you use a megaphone! <laughs> what is the evidence you have? <laughs> Tell me! My precious eye went flying! <laughs> you fucking dumbass! Maybe, but that doesn't matter! What do you know about D? Tell me! That really hurt! I'm gonna kill you now! So hand it over! Hand over? Olivia?
Rabbit? The courier, he... vanished? Courier Rabbit would never hide in here. What are you doing that for? You there. Perfect timing. I can't take it anymore. Take what? What is Deborah talking about? That lightning strike electrified the floor and handrails. So I'm doing my best not to touch them. <laughs> but I can't take it anymore. My arms, legs, neck, back, everything is screaming in pain. <laughs> I need to try and calm it down. striking an airplane. Crazy, huh? Doesn't this shaking feel odd to you? First, squeaking windows, and now seats and floors are electrified? I'm almost impressed by your capacity to worry about the mundane. Hold it! What was that about the windows? They were squeaking, right? Squeaking! The windows! You're saying the windows on this bucket squeak? What? Hmm. Huh? You're pulling my leg. If the windows were really squeaking, why, we'd all be dead by now. That lightning strike would have come in through the cracked window. We'd have smashed into the sea, its surface harder than concrete. It's like Dr. Johnson always says. Fall from an airplane, and you'll die. So just keep your fear-mongering to yourself. There certainly doesn't seem to be any counting in her notes. What's going on here, then? You also take notes on suspicious people, right? That's right. There's you, of course, and 
I've got notes on that guy with the mannequin. Oh, I've got his number. He's one of them object sexuals. I'll have to take your word for that. It's a term applied to individuals who fall in love with inanimate objects. Come on, you've heard of it. A type of paraphilia. It's like Dr. Johnson always says, love has no boundaries. What about the guy with the scar on his forehead? Stony face, in business class? Oh yes, workaholic, textbook. He's got it bad too. He's either using his work to run away from something or work itself is his reason for living. Reason for living. It's like Dr. Johnson always says, it doesn't matter what it is, just find a reason to live. You're pulling my leg. If the windows were really squeaking, why, we'd all be dead by now. That lightning strike would have come in through the cracked window. We'd have smashed into the sea, its surface harder than concrete. It's like Dr. Johnson always says, fall from an airplane and you'll die. So just keep your fear mongering to yourself. There certainly doesn't seem to be any counting in her notes. What's going on here, then? You! There's nothing here. Door looks fine. The front is a cherry blossom pattern, and snow is on the back. When did that change over? It's a domestic flight, no large bags. The cherry blossoms and snow are switched, no mistake. So what does that mean?
There's nothing here. Hmm. It's like I'm not even here. Oh dear. Control will be an issue if I can't find it. <sighs> Sir. Can I help you with anything? Where's Olivia? Excuse me, sir. Exactly which Miss Olivia are you searching for? Olivia Jones. She's a member of the crew, just like you are. I'm very sorry, sir, but she isn't aboard this flight. Come on. Did that lightning strike you too? She was right here a moment ago. In any case, you need to contact Logan Airport immediately. Tell them we have an emergency up here. Also, get the BPD to send some cops to the airport. Detective Forrest Kaysen in particular. Give him my name and you'll have no problems. Well, excuse me, sir. Are you hoping to use this confusion for something nefarious? If so, I'll have to stop you. Ugh, damn Next it. time, I'll break more than you watch. <laughs> My most humble apologies, Mr. David Young. This incident has us all a little riled up, I'm sure. Huh? I'll make the call about the suspicious person immediately. To our destination, Ronald Reagan International Airport. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to get back to work. What a beautiful sunset. It reminds me of the day I proposed. <laughs> mm. 
little Peggy. I'll find who killed you. I will. Looks fine. When did you move to this seat? When indeed, young Mr. Young. So funny you would ask. What does that mean? If time changes, so too does place. Time is of the essence. You of all people should understand. If time changes, so too does place. Time is of the essence. That lightning strike. How did you know about it before it even happened? Don't tell me you can control lightning strikes. Your ability to look is not bad, but you need to be able to observe a little more carefully. engine isn't damaged. You have good observational skills. You already know the answer. Am I correct? Do you know what happened to the courier? It might be said that I do, and it might be said that I don't. If time changes, so too does place. Time is of the essence. Either way, Mr. Young, you cannot ask me to do your job for you. 
What about that female member of the cabin crew? You mean Olivia Jones? You saw her. Did she remind you of little Peggy? <gasps> what do you know about little Peggy? Blonde, blue eyes and a mole by her eye. Did she smell of the same soap, too? Just how much do you know? Everything you told me all of it yourself, Mr. Young. You're overlaying your memories of little Peggy onto Olivia, aren't you? What's going on here? What have you done to me? Can you finally see them? These are things with a special meaning for you. What are you talking about? Catch them if you can. You may discover something about her. Clover represent your memories of her. Don't let them slip away. What are you talking about? Mr. Young, I've placed a memory left by her in your house. That memory be Belongs to you, Mr. Young.
What's he talking about? Leaving something in my house. A memory with her. Clover. Little Peggy. Could it be? Just, who are you? It was a snowy night. I remember it very well. Is Amanda doing okay? Amanda? You know her, too? Her well-being is a good thing. A good indication of your own well-being, Mr. Young. Marshal, are you okay? What's with the attitude? I'm only asking because I was worried. You'd think nothing happened at all. I don't need your jabber, boy. Derek Buchanan. I'm not sure why, but he seems determined to ignore me. You've got quite a young wife. Is there a big age gap between you? You're giving courage to men all across our fair nation. If a stony-faced gorilla like you can marry such a young, beautiful creature, there's hope for all of us yet, isn't there? But that's a surprise. You're the last person I'd expect to be carrying a picture of your family. Listen up. I don't know who you are. But if you want to keep sucking down air, never talk to me again. A man is far more than just his looks. My wife understood that well. Marshal Buchanan doesn't know who I am? There's something very odd going on here. But just what is it? 
My turn, asshole. Oh, ma chérie, I know. You must have been so scared. Mm. How is my Suki? Okay. There'll be champagne as soon as we arrive in D.C. Ooh, I think some Chardonnay might be nice. Didn't your mannequin just break? Hey, excuse me. She's Suki, not a mannequin. Therefore, she most certainly cannot ever just break. Do you intend to make an enemy of the entire fashion industry? No. That mannequin got totally wrecked. Tut tut! Say another word, mister, and I shall unleash my anger! Okay, you win. Forget I even asked about your mannequin. <sighs> my bad. No more about Suki. That's right. She's not a mannequin. We can forget this ever happened. Of course, us being top fashion designers, we're never going to remember you anyway. <laughs> I don't do autographs. I'm here on my private time. When did you become a military maniac? This is a fashion, you heathen. Retro and military, it's called. Both Suki and I are completely anti-war, of course. Okay. But what I really wanted to know was, when did you change your clothes? <sighs> Progress cannot be stopped. When we changed is not what is important. Rather, the question should be, when can we change? Indeed, just look. The fashion we have on right now is already headed toward obscurity. It's imminent, like fluttering petals. At any moment, new inspiration is going to just explode into my brain. Like, oh, uh, of? And mm, ah, Von. Mm. Ah, Von. God. Eureka. <sighs> Your exclamation just lifted the fog from my brain in a flash! Now, say it with me. Oh, Vongov! This will be my next theme! Your mannequin... I mean... Is Suki really okay? You're so persistent. Look at her smooth, perfect body. She doesn't have a mark on her. Hmm. So, oh, you're so good. Oh, my Suki. Suki, you are just too lovely. If I were to lose you, I doubt I could go on living. This does look like the real Suki. Is it just what's going on here?
beers. You've got red powder on your clothes. What is it? <gasps> uh, 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 a Oh, excuse me. Now then, uh, where exactly is this red powder on my clothing? I don't see anything at all. <sighs> An elite fashion designer. And a mysterious powder? My instincts as a former narcotics detective tell me something's up. I'll question him and find out more. Brilliant lights cast deep shadows. What's that supposed to mean? Musicians, artists, designers. Top clientele for drug pushes. I don't deny it. And you're one of them too? I don't need that stuff. I've got Suki. There's nothing that can possibly stimulate me more than her. Comparing her to the effects of mere chemicals, synthetic drugs, <laughs> you may as well just slap her in the face. Your average peasant may require the stimulation of drugs, but I most certainly do not. I... Yours is a world of trends, isn't it? Well, there are trends in drugs, too. You're sensitive to trends, right? You know what I'm talking about. Real blood. The ultimate drug, considered the final and best of the blood series. As the name might suggest, it's a bright red powder. Just like the suspicious powder I saw on your clothing. You seem quite desperate to paint me as a junkie. But you're just overthinking things. The substance you question is nothing like that silly, real blood. It's far more wonderful. Revolutionary, like a completely new age. For now, well, just call it D. Tell me more about this new age. <clears throat> no comment. If it's all legit, surely you can tell me about it. It isn't time to reveal anything yet. You'll hear about it soon enough, along with the rest of the world. So you're planning on spreading a new age called D across the entire world simultaneously? <laughs> no comment. Hmm. This guy could be a lot more dangerous than he looks. I'll try taunting him a little. Tell me more about this. If it's you, hmm. I'll try talk. I've worked it out. The D of this new age is the D from Duncan. Oh. Oh. In other words. You want to make your own name the symbol of this new age. The whole world will be under the spell of the red powder that bears your name. But that isn't art. It's just attention-seeking. The desire for conquest. Just another wannabe dictator. Is that what Suki wants? Say whatever you like. It's not like you can stop me. This guy is tougher than I thought. He knows I don't have anything on him, okay? I'll slap him with some proof. Something he can't run away from. All this talk of a new age called D, though. I just hope my bad feeling about all this is way off the mark.
Hey! Why did I even think to try this? I must be getting tired. There's no one hiding in here. Where'd the courier go to? There's nothing here. Go, Boston, go! <laughs> nothing says Boston quite like this. There must be a baseball fan on board. It's for Boston versus New York. Pretty good seats, too. Of course, it's been used. <laughs> Things don't come that easy. I've collected all the puzzle pieces. The west side window. Be champagne as soon as we arrive in DC. I'm very sorry, sir, but she wasn't a boy. I don't know who you are. That's it. This piece of the past has been solved. Marshall, are you really sentimental enough to hold on to a pen that can't even write? Unexpected. Most unexpected. You seem quite different from the man I first imagined you to be. But that doesn't mean you're totally free from suspicion. I told you The to same uh, trick won't work twice. Damn it! Although it's still the first time for you. The Fenway Park ticket was a used ticket. What? The seat cover pattern is cherry blossom and snow. What are you rambling about? The destination is in the other direction. 
the sun can be seen from the windows on the right side. In other words, the aircraft is flying south. Explain yourself clearly! I am David Young, a private detective who also collaborates with the BPD. Now you, Derek Buchanan, I consider you suspicious. If you are the one I'm after, you're gonna remain heavily involved in my investigation from now on. So let me give you this warning. I'll do whatever it takes to achieve my goal. I'll never give up. Even if it means I have to get in your way. So be ready for that. Oh, one other thing. Something I probably ought to mention. According to the BPD files, you get killed while transporting the courier known as Rabbit. to be killed? Antonio Zapatero and Olivia Jones. They vanished right in front of my eyes. Literally, vanished. But they didn't vanish at all. They were never on this flight. This isn't the AG Flight 117 of Boston. It's a different aircraft heading for Washington. In other words, they didn't vanish. I moved. It must have happened at that moment. I used the broken fountain pen to come further back in time. I don't feel anything from either one anymore. David. Why do you shave your beard every day? <laughs> it was just starting to grow out. It's such a waste. Little Peggy. What should I do? Ah! <laughs> 